So how do you feel about the beliefs that you hold? How do you feel about the expectations that you hold? Esther said to us in the early days of our explaining this to her, but Abraham, it's true. It's true. This thing I believe, this thing I expect is true. And we said, we're not questioning that, but we have another question for you. Do you want it in your experience? Well, what's that got to do with anything? Everything. But it's true. We said, there are many things that are true that you want to experience, and there are many things that are true that you don't want to experience. We would suggest you keep the things you want to experience that are true active in your vibration while you deactivate the things that are true that you don't want in your experience. Deactivate them. How do you do that? By withdrawing your attention from them. Okay, so I'm not going to think about that thing that I'm thinking about. How's that working out? I'm not going to think about that. I'm not going to think about that. I'm not going to think, I'm not going to think about this because when I think about this, it really bothers me and I'm not going to think about this. It bothers me to think about this. I'm not going to think about this. I've been thinking about this for far too long. I'm not going to think about this anymore. I want you to stop doing that. You say to your children, I don't want to see that again. And your children know what to say. They want to say, then look the other way. If you don't want to see it, then don't ask me to stop doing it. Just look away. And that really is our message to you. You've, you could learn it from your children. Just look away. Well, that feels odd in a reality-based society, doesn't it? Because most humans have been sorting the realities, the manifestations into piles. These are good piles and these are bad piles and these are not so good piles. And we say, but then by the time it's manifested, that's not when we want you to try to apply your focus. It's hard not to notice things that are around you if you've got a vibration that's active within you. So yesterday, Esther was thinking, just a train of thought. She was thinking about a new album of current seminars that she's pulled together. It's called a seasonal album. And she was working on the album covers and enjoying the process of selecting the product for it. And so she was thinking about these wonderful edited versions of some seminars and how fun it was to put a really beautiful album cover on it. So she was just enjoying that thought. And then she thought about a friend of hers who is not tech savvy, who is not able to receive the live stream. She can't download MP3s. She wants CDs. And Esther was thinking how nice it is to have those CDs. And then she got thinking about that person and where that person now is and what that person is now doing and wondering how it's working out for her. And without even meaning to, Esther was down a sort of uncomfortable trail. So she thought, that was really tricky because I started out thinking about one thing, ended up thinking about another thing, which led to another thing, which led to another thing. And now I'm in a place where I want to pull back from it. And there wasn't so much momentum going that she couldn't pull back from it. But she pondered, how did I get there? And then she realized something that she's been listening to us say to you all emphatically, especially recently, that she wasn't following a trail of subject like it seemed. You know how you can do that? Do you ever play that game? Well, first I thought about that, and then I thought about that, and then I thought about that, and then I thought, I got here because I was thinking, first I was thinking that, and then I was thinking that, and then I was thinking that. Have you ever played that game back? Well, stop it. <laughs> what she has been hearing us say, rather than choosing the thought because of the subject matter, choose the thought because of the way it feels. Choose it vibrationally. Get the ball rolling momentum by choosing the way you want to feel which will lead you to the thought which will then lead you to another thought which will then lead you to another thought and even though you might jump subject 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 you won't jump vibration now does that make sense to you have you been listening to us enough to know that there is a vibrational content that is the basis of your point of attraction? It's not subject, subject, subject. It's vibrational frequency, vibrational frequency, vibrational frequency. In other words, 
If you're on the ornery disc, we've been describing the emotion that you might be feeling in a moment as actually selecting a vibrational point of attraction. We are calling those your, your point of attraction, your grid, or your, called it so many different things, you don't know what we're calling it. But it's a, the place where you stand, it's spinning because it's attractive. It's calling to it other things like it. So let's say that like on the emotional scale, you could be on the fear disc, or you could be on the ornery disc, or you could be on the happy disc, you could be on the joy disc, the loving disc, the anger disc, the resentful disc, the fear disc. In other words, you can choose your point of attraction, and in fact you do all day every day. So let's say that for whatever reason you're on the ornery disc. Don't you notice when you're on the ornery disc, when ornery is the vibrational frequency that you've got going on, that the subject matter can skip all over the place. You're ornery about the way your children are behaving. You're ornery about the way your spouse is behaving. You're ornery about the way your government is behaving. You're ornery about the way traffic is behaving. You're ornery about the way the weather is behaving. You're ornery about the way the cat behaved. In other words, it doesn't matter what the subject is. The subject is producing orneriness within you. And most humans do not understand that you can control the ornery factor. You can control how many ornery things you rendezvous with or how many happy things you rendezvous with. But you can't do it after you've rendezvoused. Because after you've rendezvoused, there's so much momentum going, well, you can, but you usually don't. After you've rendezvoused with something that makes you feel ornery or makes you feel fearful or makes you feel angry or defensive or guilty or blameful, there's enough momentum going that other thoughts like that are going to join them. Haven't you noticed that? Ever had a conversation around dinner and somebody gets started and you all sort of pile in? And before you know it, you're explaining things that happened 20 years ago that felt just like that. And one might say, well, what's that got to do with now? We say everything is the same vibrational frequency. You just reactivate it again. So every thought that's ever been thought still exists. You have the potential of activating anything right here, right now. And it doesn't take very much focus upon it in order to activate it with enough momentum that it begins to be a point of attraction for you where things like it are going to start showing up. And you know what the first thing that shows up once you find yourself spinning on one of these discs? The first thing that happens is more thoughts like it join it. Momentum. And the next thing that happens, and right on the heels of it is, you have an emotional, we're going to call it an emotional manifestation. Because emotion is a manifestation, isn't it? Don't you want to call it a manifestation? You can feel it all through you. Esther was watching a movie on the airplane the other day, and she found herself emotional. It wasn't even happening on her airplane. It was just something that she was focused upon. The thought was producing emotion within her. So we want to talk to you about anything that is important to you. We have a few things that we'll wedge in the crack around the subjects that are important to you. We want you to know, we want you to leave here knowing unequivocally that you are the creator of your own reality, which means you are the focuser of vibration which equals your point of attraction and all things follow that. We want you to know that you have the ability to have complete and utter control of your focus, but it takes a little while to focus upon it. We want you to know that we've written so many books and there are more coming and in all of the books and there are more coming are processes that help you in your focusing yourself into alignment with who you really are. We want you to know that you were source energy before you came into this physical body and that that larger part from which you came still exists as that larger non-physical part. And even though the personality that you know as you is here offering thoughts and having experiences and offering vibration and having a point of attraction, there is another part of you, a non-physical part of you that is pure positive energy that stands in a vibrational experience without any resistance beaming a signal to you that you can't get away from. And that is the reason that you feel negative emotion or positive emotion. Your emotions are always your vibrational indicator of how wide the gap is between who you really are and all that you've become and who you are allowing yourself to be right now, this red hot minute that you are focused upon whatever you are focused upon. 
So as you begin to understand that you've got this magnificent guidance system that is always letting you know what you're doing vibrationally. And once you start caring ah, about how you feel ah, so much that you become unwilling to focus sloppily or to focus deliberately on something that doesn't feel good. Once you decide that you want to feel good, that you deserve to feel good, that you can feel good. And so you practice feeling good. That's what all those processes are about. Once you begin applying some of them and you have control of the way you feel, then you have control of your point of attraction. And then the manifestations that follow prove to you, they are the evidence to you that you've managed to bring yourself into creative control just the way you intended to. You said, I'll go forth, I'll explore the contrast. The contrast will help me to define things that I want. We're sending out rockets of desire. I will have ideas and desires that I'm not vibrationally up to speed with at first, but I can practice myself up to speed with them. And you knew that when you did practice yourself into the frequency of your desire, and there was therefore no split energy going on within you, that then that desire would have to show up in your experience in multiple ways because you're offering a vibration a not split energy vibration a pure vibration about what you want and you're not shooting yourself in the foot with a contradictory thought therefore you're not slowing it down therefore it must come and it must come fast you knew that when you said you were going to come forth into this physical body we're just here to remind you what your plans were so that you can apply them with a little bit more focus because most humans we love you so much are sloppy in your focus because you have become willing to endure negative emotions you put up with the feeling of guilt that's just crazy you put up with the feeling of blame you put up with the feeling of condemnation you put up with the feeling of fear we cannot figure out why you would do that. Why would you allow yourself to feel the evidence of split energy when you have the power to not split your energy? There's only one reason. And that's not a good one. <laughs> You're just looking at what's out there instead of choosing from the buffet. You, you don't do that, however, at the buffet. You're picky. You're picky eaters. We want you to be picky thinkers, picky feelers. We want you to want to feel good. We want you to want to feel good so much that you're willing to focus yourself into a way that you do feel good. So we're eager to talk with you about anything that matters to you. Don't worry about us. We will wedge our message in the crack. We want to bring you around to knowing that the earlier in the day that you decide that you're going to focus in a way that feels good, then the more momentum you'll get toward that and the more magnificently your day will unfold. But there's always another day. Sometimes you say to us, it's quite cute when you say it. You don't say these exact words, but you say something that means the same as this. Abraham, I have fallen out of an airplane and I do not have a parachute. Would you please advise me as to what I should do now? <laughs> and we say, hang on, it will be over shortly. momentum you say <laughs> but you could wake up tomorrow and you could lie in your bed and just find some little particle of something to appreciate and you could hold your attention upon that for as little as 17 seconds and you could get a whole other ball rolling you see and so if you decide that you're going to do that on the first morning you probably won't make it till breakfast before you begin rolling the way you've been rolling but the second day it'll be easier and the third will be easier and once you've done that for 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 days what you're going to begin to notice is that you can get out of bed on the right foot you can get off on the right vibrational start you can get a vibration going within yourself that perpetuates more that feels good and more that feels good and more that feels good until eventually you will have such a force field of positive energy swirling around you that anyone with negative intentions just bounces off of you because you are vibrationally different frequencies so it can't be any more than you can set your radio dial on 101 and hear what's being broadcast on 97 in other words the frequencies have to match up when you've got a frequency that is well established then things that match that well established frequency will be your experience and that is what deliberate creation is all about